Hey everybody, what is going on? We've got a lot of information to go over tonight. First, we're gonna go over how to run off a print on the new Elfin printer. Um, and then we're gonna go over the fabric that just came in for Martin's chair. I know everybody's been anxious to see that as well as a special surprise that I've got for you coming up. Hey baby, I hear the blues are calling, toss salads and scrambled eggs. Mercy. And maybe I seem a bit confused. Yeah, maybe. All right, welcome back. First things first, we're going to do a test run on this Elfin printer. The part we're going to be printing off today is what you've already seen. Now, this particular piece has been primed, so it's a little bit different in color than this piece, because this piece isn't getting painted. This piece is. We're going to print one off right now. The piece that we print off is going to go to one of you viewers. Now this is straight out of the box plug and play. I've printed off a couple of things already, but I certainly didn't have to calibrate anything or level anything out or anything like that. Um, I've, I've heard that that's a real problem with some of the filament type printers but it was not a problem with this one it came from the factory ready to go all you have to do is plug it in and choose your file so that's what we're going to do let's get it running so what you can't see is I have already downloaded onto the thumb drive the file that we want to print which is going to be this Fraser relief printer I'm going to take some of the Nova 3D resin, give it a little shake. And I like to wear gloves when I've been dealing with this stuff because it can be kind of nasty. So, just pour a little bit in the bat. I'm sure there's a science to this. I don't know what it is. I just do it like this, and I've been getting great results, which goes to show it's really user-friendly. <clears throat> so, on here, we've got different options. I'm going to go to File. Right here, we have the Fraser logo. Print it. Make sure the LCD screen is clean. Yes, it is. There we go. Now, I am going to put this lid back on and there we go the next time you see me we'll have one of those all right here it is it's all finished it's lifting up out of the vat now so what I'm going to show you here now is just the post processing portion what happens after the print is complete And it is a pretty simple process actually. Now it's raising up. She's all done. I'm going to remove the lid. The printing process is complete. So just turn it off. This is so easy, I love it. This thing just unscrews off the top. Slides right off. And there you go. That's it. Now there is some post-processing to do. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna slide that back in there for now. And actually what I'm gonna do, get a couple of paper towels ready. Because the resin that was uncured is still a little wet and drippy. But it cleans up easy with a paper towel. No big deal. <clears throat> now in the last couple of prints, what I've done was taken this part off before I take the vat out. That way this doesn't continue to drip down. Now the good thing is with the unused resin, 
that can go right back in to the jug. Now Nova 3D has packaged all of this stuff together. They send it all, all together. Uh, so there's really nothing extra to buy. It's got a little spout right there. Dump it down in there. Now the other thing that I like to do is take the little spatula that came with it and give it a little scrape because I want to get all of my resin back into the bottle. So, give it a little scrape there. Now, if you're like me, you are going to go through a ton of paper towels. That's okay. They're cheap. I'd rather use a ton of paper towels and get it extra clean. In half the time. Put the vat back in there. Secure it back with those. Now they have included this plastic spatula for scraping this off of the plate. I like to use a little blade to get it started. Now I will use the spatula here once I get it started. And some people use the isopropyl alcohol to kind of break the bond, but uh, this seems to work just fine for me. Move the little blade out. There is our print, which will go into the alcohol here in a second. Of course, all I'm doing off camera that you can't see is uh, just wiping the pieces down a little bit with the paper towels. area isn't set up great for filming this stuff. It's set up more for me coming out here and playing with it. But as I make more videos, they'll get better. Now as far as the printer itself goes, once this lid goes back on, Printer's done. I'll take this little screen, put it in this plastic here, just to keep the resin from getting all over in this drawer. Take my funnel, do the same thing, just wipe it off, stick it back in the drawer. I still have a lot of the resin. Of course, I've only printed these three items here, but I wasn't sure how far it would go. I've never used one before. I am happy that it seems to go pretty far. Now, I have this jar. It just has isopropyl alcohol in it. So I'm going to take this piece that's still a little slimy, still has some resin on it. I'm going to rinse it in the isopropyl alcohol. Now they say that the resin is kind of strong and smelly, but really the alcohol is the stronger, smellier part to me.
Now what I did on these last two pieces, it, you know, this stuff is pretty, these are pretty strong pieces. These aren't made out of, you know, glass or ceramic. So I put them in there and I give them a pretty decent little shake. It's not like they're going to break. I just like to really kind of swirl them around in there. Because you're just trying to get all of the, uh, all of the resin off, all of the uncured resin. This is just a bath for it. So after this, I'm going to save you the next step. I'm not going to film it. After this, I take it inside and I run it under some water. That's it. That's, that's the last step. Um, to get it to this point, all I did was spray it with some primer. That's the only difference between this one and this one. But this, to me, has soaked enough. So I am going to show you the product straight out of the printer, straight out of the isopropyl alcohol. And we are back. So what you can see in front of you here is the actual fabric that I just got in. Now I had ordered one yard of this stuff and it was with taxes $150 a yard. But they actually sent me what I think is closer to four yards because we have a bolt that is about four foot long by 12 foot high, 12 foot tall. So um, I have a ton of this fabric. Um, I think it's super close. I think it's perfect. Part of the problem I've had in the past is that the stripes on some of the upholstery fabric are actually like one inch stripes and by the time you scale that down it doesn't look very good. Um, you get maybe three of the stripes in a three foot section and it just doesn't work. These have very small little stripes. Um, I'm going to put my little tape measure here. Not a tape measure but my little ruler. So you can kind of see, I don't know if it shows up on camera very well, but you can kind of see that there's, I would guess, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there's probably ten stripes per inch on this fabric. So it is perfect. I also promised you guys a little bit of a surprise, and that is what I have right here. So the little bit of the surprise is that I have these Lazy Boy schematics that are 1 12th scale. So this is a fully functioning recliner with the fulcrum and the hand pull lever and all of this. There are seven pages of microscopic little pieces that need to be cut out and assembled and that way we will actually have a working model. Alright, now for the great unveiling, I've got another little surprise for you. Now before I unveil this, I want to stress that this is just this is just a sample this is not the actual chair it's not built it's not finished this is just a reupholstered extra chair that i had laying around that i wanted to see what this fabric looked like as a chair as opposed to just a piece of fabric so it doesn't articulate i know the cushions are off i know the sizing is off and it's just i want to get that out of the way this is not the final product it's just a sample so without further ado that's what we've got. When you reupholster the chair, that's pretty much what it's going to look like. Has the Valentines on there just for fun. Um, like I said, I know that it's that it's off, that it's rough, um, but I still wanted to give you some sort of idea of what the finished product will look like. I know the cushions are different and all of that great stuff. So. Anyways, this is just a throwaway sample that I threw together real quick so we could see what the actual fabric looked like on a chair. I hope you like it. Please share this video, and I appreciate you watching. Let me know what you liked or didn't like about the video, what I could do better next time, and I appreciate it. See you later.